Linda. My guy, let me tell you something, man. I founded this. Wow. Godfather. You're talking to a godfather. Wow. Like, <laughs> you, know, so, you know, like, sometimes people wonder, like, what does God look like, right? <laughs> You're looking at him. <laughs> You're looking at him. Like, if you've ever, if you've ever been curious. Can I touch him? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm the blueprint from which it comes from. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special, a special edition of Podcast and Chill. Sol, how long have we been manifesting this interview, bro? Too long. Hey? Too long. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the legendary, one of my idols, Fat Joe. <sighs> and, and you know that every time I tell him he's like my idol, he's my hero, he's like, yeah, fuck out of here, nigga. <laughs> Get out of here, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, what is that? Hey? Dude, I grew up listening to you. I watched you on TV, bro. And here you are, in the flesh. You know when people say that, they make it sound like it's a compliment, but all I hear is, man, you old as hell. <laughs> like, I'm like, why would you want to tell me that? Why would you want to tell me that when you were in diapers, you were watching me? Like, that's, you know? Yeah. But yeah, uh, he had to harass me. How long have you been trying to get me on? Like, two years? Two years, yeah. 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 And guess who made it happen, bro? Ooh. Our girl, Tebucho. Oh! Yeah, 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 yeah. She made it happen. She didn't make it happen. Yeah, she did, Joe. No, she just gave you my number, which you've always had, I think. Yeah, but it never. You never so answered. she didn't do it. Nothing. Ha it's the, she didn't do it. You still. We still had to talk. Yeah. Have Don't give her that much credit. Have you smashed it, bro? Have I what? Have you smashed it? Double hole. Mm. No, man. Yeah. My brother. I'm a happily married brother. Before. That's never stopped anybody. No, I've only really gotten close to Double in like the last. Year, mm. I remember bumping into her in public places like malls and stuff, and they would like look at me crazy. Like her and Faith, they would look at me crazy. <laughs> but um, I've only recently gotten to know her, yeah. so I, I we have mutual friends. She's very close to my brother. I've learned, so they were very close when they were like younger, um, and they they moved around the same circles. Yeah, but that's about it. Yeah, you got a brother, bro. Yeah. How many are you? Three. Three. So it's one brother. I've got one brother. I'm the oldest, so there's one brother mm -hmm. uh, who's in the middle, and then I've got a younger sister. What do they do, bro? Because I've never heard of them. My brother's like a jack of all trades. So currently, him and his wife run a boutique in Santon called Sunel, oh, just nice. across from the Gents. Yeah. Uh, by the in the Da Vinci Mall next to the uh, uh, they call it Mandela Square. Now I'm used to Santon Square. Yeah. And then my sister is a, uh, she's got a doctorate uh, in medicine as a physiotherapist. Shit. Yeah. So you're the black sheep. <laughs> you could say that. Black sheep, you know. Yeah. I'm hot. I'm going to take this mask off, man. I feel like I'm wearing a... Uh, polo neck. Polo neck. Mm. Huh? And then where did you guys, did you guys grow up in Pretoria, eh? No. Born in Pretoria. Grew up in the States. In um, Atlanta, and, LA. Um, I was in Massachusetts town called Amherst and then moved to Wilmington, North Carolina. My mom did some time in Greensboro, did some time in ten, uh, Kentucky. And now my mom is based out of, uh, like just outside of Washington, D.C. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Is that where you get the accent from? I, it was worse than this. Um, when I, when I, 
I left South Africa when I was six, came back uh, after high school. So I was like purely American sounding. And I had a, um, a bit of a Southern accent, mm -hmm. like a real heavy North Carolina accent. And then being in South Africa and going to school here, you just like forced to, you know, it's to say water, you say water, you know? <laughs> so it's like water. Cause people, if you say, yo, can I have some water? They'd be like, huh? <laughs> so you have to say water. And so you like, no matter where you go in the world, you, you're forced to change your accent so that people can understand you. So you'll go to the South, you'll develop like a Southern way of speaking. If you go to China or Hong Kong, you'll speak English the way they, they speak yeah, there yeah. so that they, you know, they understand you better. Yeah. You just, that's how accents just come and go like that. So coming to South Africa forced me to kind of shift my accent. And so when I talk to people, they say, I now have what sounds like a mid-Atlantic accent. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you can't hear, you hear a bit of South Africa, you hear a little bit of the US, a little bit of maybe some British stuff. It's just like mid-Atlantic. But why did you guys come to SA? Why did you move this side? Hey man, you know when you have parents who are like all about the struggle and building uh, a nation and all that oh, stuff. Oh, they're part of the struggle. Well, my dad did some time in jail. He used to smuggle. And, you know, like they were active. My dad was active. And so um, after 1990, they just started getting homesick and they wanted to be here. Mm. And so... The question was, do they leave and leave me in the States, like the whole family, because I'm the oldest, or do I come back? So my dad asked me and pleaded with me. He's like, listen, come back. And I was like, come back. I, I didn't know South Africa, like, you know? Yeah. So I came back, and that's how I ended up. I've been here for, like, the last, what? It's, it's crazy now, 28 years. Shit, you ain't back to America. I, f I fly up and down. Mm. Um, I was engaged to an American girl. Oh, wow. But, um, no. Yeah. Mm. Was it a culture shock when you came to this side? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. From what it was that side? Because if you're not, like, raised in a particular place, and then you come back, no relationships, no contacts, like, no friendships, and you're starting from scratch, there is an element of a culture shock. But I've always been moving my whole life. It wasn't a culture shock where, like, I had a breakdown. It was a culture shock in the sense that I had to shift and figure out way, like, re understand how people were and the dynamics and like coming from the states you know and having grown up in a South African household you know that there are all these different cultures but you don't understand it because you're in a, an environment where everybody has one culture mm. one language so you come here and you suddenly realize oh my god okay so there's Tswana, Sutu, yeah, Tosa, Tosa. And, uh, and then like and then you learn what that means and, and then you meet people from those backgrounds more and more and you get a better understanding of the different cultures and, and what makes them special unique and what makes uh, and like at Varsity as much as there was like a 60% black population but everybody broke up into their cultures so mm. the Basutu students were here mm. the Mauritius students kept to themselves then you had the Tosas from PE and whatever the, and, and they kept to themselves then you had the so like all the guys from Soweto like clicked together yeah, yeah, there's like yeah, a yeah. Soweto culture mm. and then like it wasn't and then you know it was interesting to me and so you learn this yeah. and then you had all like the foreign students who would just mix and match and try and blend and da 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 and then you see the cultures like the Soweto guys all thought they were like the biggest gangsters on campus, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you see the differences, like the Tosa guys with their caps and jackets and their... And then... Yeah. So which crowd were you hanging out with? I floated, so I had like a mix of like some Tosa friends. I had a, I had a Kenyan friend that I was really close with. Um, I had some senior... I, I, I mixed them... I, I mixed it or I mixed it up. I had some... Uh, Tuanas and Basutus that I linked with, linked up with, like it was. I was I was floating. I was all over the place. I was kind of like the guy who brought the cool kids together. Uh, I threw mad parties at Varsity. As a matter of fact, 1995. I'm probably responsible for 80 percent of everybody who failed that year. Wow. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> no, like you, all you have to do is ask people who were there. 95 UCT. I must have thrown like. 40, 20, 30 parties. Shit. People could, and, but the parties were epic. It wasn't like small time parties, like all oh, get togethers with the little. No. At the time, it was unheard of to bring like big giant speakers yeah. into a house. Fuck. Like a house. We would put streamers, balloons, and just go crazy. And the parties were obnoxious. They were so good that people couldn't even study and they couldn't wait for the next one. So. 
Jeez. Every time we were throwing a party, people would complain. They'd be like, nah, not another one. Because they knew the choice was like study or go party. They're going to party. Yeah. As he's talking, it reminds me of that video with Snoop Dogg and Dre where Dre was. House in- Party. You yeah. know the movie House Party? Yeah. That was us. Yeah. That was us 20 times a year. But I now understand why he's so good on radio because he can relate to so many people. Because he's encountered so many people. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. How did how did the radio I, bug coming you? in as an outsider forced me to I didn't have I didn't have an identity where I was like this is me I'm, this is my click and da, da, da. so it forced me to be open and I could I could you know Come mix and merge and talk and understand so I can roll with anybody yeah, yeah. anybody you're a chameleon yeah yeah when did the radio bug bit you I think my dad says that uh, it, ha- it, it, it I'd, I'd been talking about radio since I was much younger, like 12 or 13. Wow. So I think 12, 13 is when it started. Um, but it wasn't like traditional radio. I used to listen to mix shows on the, on the radio. Back in, in America. Back like in the 90s, yeah. Mm. Uh, and I was like, whoa. Because, you know, you always knew that there was, a, the, there was a hip-hop DJ. But I didn't know that you could mix songs and and scratch and, and extend tracks. And, like, this is back when everything was on vinyl. Yeah. I was like, how do they do that? And then that's, that's where the radio bug got me because it was like a mix of my love of hip-hop and then being intrigued by what the DJs were doing and then that it sucked me into the world of radio. I got to understand, oh, there's record pools. Guys get music from here. And then because you're listening to radio shows, you hear links and this and that. And then so I always dreamt I'd have a mix show on radio. I never thought uh, that I would be the guy who's talking yeah, on radio. Yeah, yeah. I thought I'd just like introduce songs and like it was just mix. And that's what got me started. That was the Who and are you then so to? so at twelve, I bought my first turntable. Yeah, I used to get an allowance. I bought one turntable, then um, I bought a mixer, then I bought another table mismatch. Yeah, then I would practice, and I was like, and then I had the rig, and I think I got a mic. So it it's, it all started at twelve. And who are you listening to at the time? I used to record tapes of a guy called DJ K Nice, who used to DJ out in Greensboro, North Carolina. He was one of the premier hip hop DJs around the country. But yeah, K Nice. I'd, I'd never heard of the tapes from like Marley Marl and Pete Rock and all of those guys in New York City who were really like the founders of this type of like DJing on, on the radio. Um, I only had access because there was no internet. And unless you, somebody gave you a tape and you had relationships, you couldn't hear it. But I, I heard K Nice and I was like, I learned about breakbeats, you know. It was, I couldn't believe it. For me, it was like going to a concert or watching a movie. Friday night, Saturday night, I'd be up all night from like 10 to 12 or or 8 to midnight when the mix show was on. I'd listen to it live, I'd tape it, and then I'd listen to the tape all week. Shit. Mm. Can you still DJ? Because we never hear Fat Joe's booked at a club. My guy, let me tell you something, man. I founded this. Wow. Godfather. You're talking to a godfather. Wow. Like, you, know, so, you know, like, sometimes people wonder, like, what does God look like, right? <laughs> You're looking at him. <laughs> You're looking at him. Like, if you've ever, if you've ever been curious. Can I touch him? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm the blueprint from which it comes from. No, but I, I, I'm joking. But, yeah, like, hip-hop DJing is something that I've always taken seriously. And unbeknownst to a lot of people, like, there's a, we've had a lot of impact in how the hip-hop industry has grown. Because I was one of the few hip-hop DJs. I was probably the only hip-hop DJ during the YFM era that was DJing at that level, in that way, at that time, that allowed, like, Osquito and them had the Rap Activity Jam, but they weren't hip-hop DJs. Mm, I was mm. a hip-hop guy. Yeah. Um, when I was DJing with Pepsi and them, like, when we took partying from Hillbrow to the North, I was the guy who was bringing the hip-hop heat. And I was playing it. I was I was playing it in the way that it's supposed to be played. Yeah. You know, because sometimes people will play it, you know, incorrectly. Mm. I was playing it correctly, as far as like the new music. And so I was. So you could. I was basically taste making in such a way that those who consumed it got an idea of how it should be, uh, how it should be listened to. Wow. And so what you're seeing now is a culmination of all of that. You gotta remember, Double HP, and then when they were out, they were rapping on like house beats. I'm the guy who was like, no, 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 no. Let's take it. Listen, this is where hip hop is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that American influence. Yeah, it's because I was a fan Mm, in the States mm. and I knew 
like how it was being consumed and how it was crafted and created. I, like I had a sixth sense about it because I grew up. In my, look, my first hip hop tape was a was a break was a like a, a break dance tape, which had like Houdini on it and uh, 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 Roxanne Chante, uh, Roxanne, Roxanne. I want to be your man, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, but, like, from back then, mm. you know, when it was, like, underground, you know, it was considered breakdancing music, yeah. you know? Yeah. When, when, when um, his wife in the At first At eight years old, that's the first tape I bought. Yeah. Like, the first ever piece of music I bought yeah. was a hip-hop tape. Uh, And at eight years old, that means I was, it was 1982. Shit. You understand? Yeah. So by the time I'm DJing in 92, you, like, I'm 10 years in. Yeah. Here, people are just no prophets of the city. Really? Maybe a little, maybe a little, you know, the, the occasional hit. But they're not hearing, like, how all the underground music is being played. Like, whether it be, like, Special Ed, K-Solo, uh, BDP, Public Enemy. All, like, I'm there. I'm, like, in the moment feeling it and watching the DJs and hearing them, how they blend the break beats and how they take the samples. And I'm like, yeah, this is... Hip hop, but it, it's connected to soul music from the 60s and 70s. And you're hearing these beats, they sound amazing, but actually the beats are from the 60s. You know what I mean? Yeah. And all the guys are doing is taking new technology and just like, you know? So I had that upbringing When, as um, far as music. Is his wife in your first radio gig? No. I was at Radio Bop, and then I, my first DJ gig, I was 17 years old, 16 years old. It was Shit. a house party in the States. And then at 17, I was working in a nightclub, bringing the heat, man. I've been making money, man, since I was 17. Damn, dog. Mm. So when does wife him come into play? When I'm 21. Yeah. Yeah. 21 years old. How does What it happen? 97, October. And how do you hear of it? I knew that there were some radio licenses that were given out. I was at Radio Bop at the time. I was were frustrated. You it? Oh, you're frustrated. But I, I was... I was loving it, but I was learning, but I wanted more. So, and I was, what's dope is they had a, a, a library with all these books on broadcasting. So I would take them and read them. Oh my goodness. By the way, I dragged this guy here to Buffer King Corner. Yeah. And I dragged him here because, <laughs> because of what we're about to do right now. Bring it over here. Bring it over here. Yeah. Let's make space. We're in the hood right now, man. We're in the hood. You're not even from the hood, though. We're in the hood. Hey, this guy. When, when Piri Soetu at Buffer King Corner. Why are we at Buffalo Corner? Because my father-in-law told me that this is where you get the best meat, bry meat in all of Soweto. My brother, thank you. This is overwhelming. No, bro. let's wrap. Let's open this, man. This is overwhelming, bro. Um, and um, I came here. This is like my fourth or fifth time here. Mm. My brother, you have to taste. All of you have to come and taste this food, man. Yeah. Like, come and grab a steak or something. But um, it's. Like the best, like grab that and tell me what you think. Just grab it. Like I don't even, I, I don't even have to ask him. No, I've had better. <laughs> Where? Where? No, I'm kidding, man. How, how crazy is that? No, this is dope. This is dope. How crazy is that? <laughs> like rich. every time you go to a, like a chisanyama, this is what you want, but you can't find it. Right? Yeah, yeah, Sometimes yeah. Sometimes there's too much barbecue sauce or this, that, and the third. Now this is clean. This It's is epic, clean. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> This is dope. <laughs> Guys, we're doing this in the morning because it gets so busy here in the evenings. This is breakfast. And Joe was like, his whole thing is like, I'll do the interview as long as it's at Bafu King. Wow. We gotta go there. Tell them. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So at Y now, um, you started the same time with both Fresh and them, near that era. Yeah. Mm. So I'd heard about it. But no, we knew that, I knew they had a license, but you, I didn't know who they were. There was no press. So I got the number from some Ikasa article or website. That number was a payphone. Mm. So they were in a building with one phone, which was a payphone. Yeah. I called the number. Ring, 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 ring. Nobody picks up. I'd sit there for 30 minutes calling you till somebody picks it up. And the dude was like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Come through. This is our address. Da, 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 da. Boom, 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 boom. Got on a bus, came to Joburg, went there. I think it was Greg Maluka at the time. Mm, mm. Greg was like, a, he was, I think he was also hustling, trying to get a gig or a job, but he was hanging out helping, sort of like giving free help. Yeah. You know, because he had had some experience at TNT, radio, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Shout out to Greg. And um, he was like, oh, okay. And we had a vibe. Yeah. And he was like, no, okay, cool. 
because I think I dropped off a tape or I did a recording and they dug it. And um, I was familiar with the studio. I knew what I was doing. Yeah. I killed it. And um, they called us back. For The rest was history. What should you do first at Y? I did weekends, Saturday morning, sat, what they call weekend breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I did Saturday mornings, um, nine to, six to 9 a.m. every day. I mean, every Saturday and Sunday for 3,500 rand a month. Shit, dog. Holla. <laughs> Dude, whose show were you gunning for? I wasn't gunning. See, the cool thing about... So I remember talking to Osquito. So me, Osquito, and Fresh were the only real DJs at the time who were gigging and playing clubs, right? Mm. And we had records. Mm. I remember talking to Osquito, and Osquito was like, yo, my brother, I don't think people know what's coming. Because we, were, we, we had music that Metro didn't have. Mm. We had access to it because we were DJs. We get in the vinyls before the radio station. We're getting singles, remixes. We're getting copies of tracks that they can't get because they're waiting for the CD. You know? So when we started, myself, Osquito Fresh, we like, we went to the music department. We said, here, 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 here. Mm. And when we launched, we had music that you could only hear in the clubs when the DJ was playing. Mm. And that's what actually like killed the other stations because we were ahead of them musically. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, for us, it was about proving a point. It had nothing to do with money. It was about proving a point that us young kids who had a passion for this, could outdo the corporate machine, and we did. Yeah. So at that time, who's like the mm. biggest, who's the top dog, the DJ? There's no top dog. Yeah, Osito yeah. had the biggest name, but I would say between me and Fresh, we, we were more, our personalities fit and suited radio more. Mm. When we had had radio experience and we had the Osquito experience because we DJ clubs. So in a way, we had an edge as far as radio over Osquito. But he was the biggest star as far as the clubs and the name and being an artist. Everyone else, yeah, they did their thing. But truth be told, it's a tripartite alliance, my brother. <laughs> Like, built it. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, call it what you want. Yeah. I mean, there's CZ Shembe, uh, Rude Boy Paul, all of them. Bad I'm, Boy. Bad Boy. And we all say, yeah, we all did it together, but I'm telling you now. Mm. Oh, my man Leo, who, who, who did the music, he came from Voice of Soweto. Leo mm. was instrumental. I, if I look at it, the axis of evil was Mosquito, Fresh, myself, and Leo. Mm. Everyone else did their thing. Don't get me wrong. But if you remove those three, the whole thing would have sounded like a community station. I heard, I heard in an interview, Fresh realized why Fim's big when you couldn't take taxis anymore because everybody would... Yeah, he didn't have a car. <laughs> yeah. And then his first cell phone was, you know those yellow Alcatel phones that oh, use the no AA way. batteries? No way. Fresh, you know you had it, man. <laughs> no, you had it. So I used to pick him up in my car for gigs. Yeah. And then because we didn't have enough records to hold the whole night, so me and him would play at like, say, a club insomnia. Um, so he'd get a gig and we go and split the fee, or I'd get a gig, we go and split the fee, but I'd go to Hillbrow, pick him up, then we drive back up, because I'm in the north. Mm. So I'm going south, pick him up, going back north. And then we'd get to the club at like 10 and we play until 4 or 5. And we split. You know, you do an hour, I do an hour, you do an hour, I do an hour, and we shared the music. And yeah. that was the vibe. So you weren't taking taxis at that time? No, I had a car. Yeah. yeah. When did you realize, fuck, YFM's big, this is massive? I've never focused on that mm. no matter how big you are no matter who you surpass there's always the next level right yeah so I'm always focused on growth I like growth I don't like like yeah we've arrived yeah we won the championship it doesn't it didn't matter mm. for me it was always about doing better doing more getting the only thing that fulfills us as humans is progress people don't realize that people always say man if only I can get that car mm. Mm. the desire to get the car and the journey towards getting the car is more fun, exciting, and fulfilling than 100%. when you get the car. Yeah, when you yeah, get the yeah, car, yeah, yeah, yeah. you feel empty again. Yeah. yeah. Now you need another car. So I'm that type. It's not like, oh, I realize we got big. I'm always focused on the next thing. When Chili comes, are you shaking? Because he was fucking shit up when he came, bro. Not like me. I didn't mention him, did I? 
He wasn't in the tripartite alliance. I didn't mention him, right? Listen, he was very good, yeah. very talented. He had some demons eventually that he was dealing with. I would say him and I, he was good. Extremely smart, sharp, bright, the whole nine. Had a beautiful girlfriend from Swaziland. Mm. But he wasn't a DJ, and he didn't have the work ethic that I had. Mm. And I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm very apologetic about this. Yeah, so there was no one at But the why. truth is the truth, man. So there was no one in the wild when you were listening, you're like, shit, this kid is coming up. No. Wow. No intimidation. I compete with God, man. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I race Limudim. No, listen. Um, you know what it is? It goes back to I work all the time. My work ethic is so insane. If you're not working as hard as I am, I can't see you as competition. Mm. So I was always looking at, look, I was reading books by Larry King, Howard Stern. Um, I had programming books, uh, broadcasting books. Um, I was reading um, books by Rupert Murdoch, about Rupert Murdoch. Mm. Um, I was studying guys like Man Cow Mullen. I would go to the States. So I wasn't like competing with Local guys name. around mm. I, I, I pick gods around the mm. world And I go okay What makes them tick What makes them do what they do And I study them Until I feel like I've mastered enough Of what they do That I don't need to watch them yeah. I can now try and do So I would That's why I stopped so watching you, you Yeah so part of it is like You emulate And you try certain things And then you learn mm. Your comfort zone Like okay I can do that mm. Or I can't do that mm. And I should try something else How did uh, Howard Stern Influence your, your radio broadcasting? Howard Stern, he, he's the blueprint of the zoo radio, of having multiple people talking. Mm. In the past, it was one DJ, bep, 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 bep. interview, bep, 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 bep. he pioneered the multiple people for talking on one subject. Mm. What did he do? It was Radio 101. Listen to me carefully. He and Robin and his cast of contributors establish a routine which is they do over and over again Howard will introduce something Robin will respond Howard will take it to another level How, uh, Robin will respond then Howard will close it or like the team will respond so it's like a rhythm it's a dance but it's like it's a, it has a beginning and an end and it's got rules to it and part of the rules are let's say we're talking right and you're like yo Joe I went to the beach today. So I'm your co-host. I went to the beach today. And I'm like, yeah, well, I went to the post office. Dead. <laughs> right? Dead. Yeah. But yeah. if you say, yo, this is Radio 101. I went to the beach today. I'm like, I went to the beach too. Which beach did you go to? It's like, yo, you don't understand. I went to this beach and this happened. That happened for real? Blah, 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 blah. And then what? And, and then, oh my God. Now you, you understand. Yeah. Like I'm helping you create a story yeah. that eventually will have an end. Yeah. But if I, I can kill it by just be going on my own tangent. Shit. It's almost like, but people don't realize that. You hear that happen all the time on radio. So Howard Stern pioneered a few things and tools that I, I use to this day in broadcasting. Um, that were never there before. Mm. And the other thing was he was really bold. He took uh, chances that others couldn't take and he, he, he was rewarded for taking those chances. Too many people are conservative yeah, in our yeah, space yeah. and they don't realize that humans are actually a lot more intelligent than their sort of conservative, you know, like it's like trying to protect people from themselves. Mm. Don't talk about this because it'll hurt their feelings. Nah, man, people are adult, they're, they're intelligent, and they talk like this every day in their private homes. Why are you being conservative here? And so he's that guy who broke that mold. So he gave DJs or radio personalities the confidence to be bold. Hmm. God, right? Yeah. You're looking at him. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, so apart from yourself, who's your favorite SA radio DJ of all time? Oh, that's a good top five. Give us a top five. Yeah, no, 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 top no, no, no. Let's not just say one. Top that's five. Crazy. That's crazy. That's difficult. That's very difficult. Mine is Fat Joe. Two is Fat Joe. Fat Joe, Fat Joe, Fat Joe. I, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> Hence, I said, apart from yourself. <laughs> mm. 
But right now, who, who, who would you say is no, the best um, now? Hey, man, who is it? Let me think. I have to think because I, I haven't even listened to radio much. I'm going to just tell you what comes into my mind. Yeah. All right? We used to love uh, Mark Gilman. Oh! But, but when I listen to him now, it's like, he says, I don't know. Mark Gilman was our, our guy. Like, he, I, to me, when I was coming up, he was a god. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a dude named Diggy in Cape Town who, who's a little underrated, but he also hasn't developed himself, but he's got a natural knack for this. Wow, man. Diggy Bonk. Shout out to Diggy. Wow. Um, I'm probably forgetting names and faces. Aren't you and, good? Oh, Mansfield when he was on. Hey, yes, 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 yes. Shout out to Mansfield. Mans oh, Mansfield. He was earning so much they paid him quarterly. No, he wasn't. <laughs> no, he wasn't. <laughs> I've earned more than Mansfield in the radio. He you wasn't. Fucking I'm me. dead serious. For real. Yeah, there's a myth. People think he earned a lot. No, no, no. no. I know the story. <laughs> Shout out to Mansfield. Who else? Um, I want to. I want to think of some women. Pen, I used to love Penny, man. Penny thinks I hate her, but she was fire when she was on, especially when she was on Metro mm -hmm. and she was that butterfly thing. And I always tell her part of the reason why we we made we attacked her was because she was the god on, oh, on Metro yeah, at the time. Yeah. And she always thinks that I, we picked on her because she's a woman or whatever. You know, women sometimes they go treat us equally. And then when you treat them equally, they go, you're bashing a woman or you're hitting. It's like, no, dog, we're seeing you as an equal mm -hmm. in a competitive space. So we're attacking mm -hmm. yes. you in fun. Competitive fun, but we're, comp we're attacking you because anyone else we attack is Mickey one Mouse man, yeah, on that lineup. Yeah, yeah. You're the one. Mm. So, but she also, I think, was never given the opportunity to, to develop or be mentored or trained. But her natural ability, I give her props. Penny, I love her. Um, who else? What do you think about radio now when you listen to it? I don't. Mm. Um, and I'm not being like mean about it. I just, I, I'm critical. I'm too critical because it's, you know, it's like, it's like you're a chef and then you have to go to a restaurant and you just be like, man, why do you cook this thing? But like what do you think of this whole new thing where uh, program managers are hiring people just because of their social media influence? I think, I think it's my fault. <laughs> How's it your fault? <laughs> your fault, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> why, Joe? Because at Metro, I brought Pearl Tusi on and she had a high social media following. Pretty much before they brought Mini, they brought, um, it's almost like my bringing Pearl opened the door to Mini, Larato, all the people who you would perceive as, look, they're broadcast personalities, but they're more social media brands than they are broadcast personalities, if you ask me. Why did you, why did you bring Pearl? It was like a... Mentorship mentee relationship. We were working on RGB. Mm. She was trying to expand her portfolio, get into acting, and do all that stuff. And I was like, "Look, well," and she and she was curious about radio. And I was like, "Look, I've got an opportunity. Let me bring you along." She people don't know this. She worked for free for like a year. Yeah, she did say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." For a year, she worked for free. So, because at that time, those stations didn't see the vision, mm. and so when I did that with her, that opened the, the door. Everybody was like, "Okay." It's a formula. You want to you want you want to know another thing that's my fault. What? Black radio. The only radio shows in this country that had producers at that time were the shows at Five FM and uh, I want to say Mansfield. We were the, I was the black first I was the first black radio show to have a team of producers. Hmm. And how did that happen? I hired them myself. Shaba was on technical production. I hired him. Ashifa Shaba. Yeah, Carlito. I hired him. I, I imported some uh, one of my boys, Nick, registered from the from the UK. Imported, <laughs> and then I imported also another talented young lady. Uh, oh, not young anymore because we're about the same age. Uh, Cindy uh, from PE had a great team, and that everybody was like, "Oh snap, we're in trouble. What do we do? Get producers." Mm. And so all of a sudden. All black radio shows immediately had producers shortly thereafter. Damn. Yeah. Fuck. Mm. Biggest paycheck you got from radio? Seven figures. Seven a month. No. Six a month. 
Shit. What show? Was that a drive time show? Couple, Breakfast? Couple of shows. Couple of shows. Couple of shows. And then when you get fired from these shows, like, are you losing your shits? Because I remember when I got fired the first no. time, I thought my world was coming to an end. Did you? Yeah. I walked away from my YFM morning show. I was fired from Kaya. I walked away from Radio 2000. East Coast, what happened there? Yeah. Hard FM, the contract term ended, and we just mutually, no. No, they terminated, and they had to pay me out for a year. Mm, 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 um, Dinger. Who else? Can you come do this. Yeah. So when you get employed, right, by a rate, especially in the later years of your career, right. they know what Fed Joe is about. They know what you're gotcha, capable gotcha, of gotcha, gotcha. and that there will be trouble or some people not liking a particular piece of content. Yeah. So isn't that discussed prior? Yeah, it's like this. Everybody's ready to rob a bank. They got the balls. Let's do it. Let's do it. Until it's like, okay, there's the bank. Let's go. <laughs> and it's like, damn. Oh, yeah. And then when they're in the bank, they're yeah. like, no, I don't like this. I don't like this. Yeah. I, I, I thought, yeah. You know, that's what it is. Oh, yeah. Fuck, I see. Don't you ever regret, like, something that you did that got you fired? Like, maybe I should no. have done that. Yeah. I've never been fired for something I did on air. Mm. Same, bro. Yeah. Fuck. It's always politics or something yeah. else going on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's off edge issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shit, bro. Yeah. When does um, the Fat Joe uh, TV show come? Because that was epic, bro. Legendary. People always want old stuff to come back, and I get it. They want to re relive the feeling they had back then. There's always conversations. Um, but I don't know. I can't say, oh, at such and such a time, maybe... I don't even know if it'll happen, but there's always conversations. Mm. Mm. Is there a radio station you feel like you've got unfinished business or one you feel like you still want to do? Oh, that's a good question. What do you mean, like, be on the air? Yeah, 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 yeah. like no. a 947? No, 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 no. You've, no, I've done it all. You've done. Um, even when I was dragging 2000, I was, I was, like, doing a favor for someone who was asking me to please, please, please come and do it. I didn't really want to. Um, this guy knows what we're doing. Mm. Watch the space. Yeah, you don't. Big things are going, man. Big things are going, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. SA, Nigeria, Senegal, Shit. Egypt, my man. Want to do things on a bigger scale? Let's talk about your love for TV, man. I want to talk about the Fat Joe uh, TV show, the one you had on, on ETV. Was it SABC? There's Fat Joe Live, which was on ETV. Yes. And then the Fat Joe Show, which was on SABC. Yeah. How does mm. that come about? I'm doing the morning show on YFM. The guys are about to launch, they launch, no, they launched this TV channel called E. The same shareholders that own Y own E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They launch E as an Indian and colored channel. <laughs> I de I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. Whoa. ETV was targeting Indians and coloreds. <laughs> they know this. Marcel knows this, man. And uh, so they're like, yo. And who better? Because he looks colored. So they're like, oh, I guess there's conversations. Yo, this morning show is making noise. It's be perfect for TV. I start talking to a production company. They invite me. They're like, yo, these guys want to do this show with you. Blah, 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 blah. I said, all right, if we do a show, I want to take my radio show and put it on TV. Mm. Meaning, I got David Cow doing comedy sketches, Lil Brown Cow. I've got Dada Man going out doing sketches and movie reviews. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, that man, he's got a chronic stutter, and we make him go watch a movie and come back and tell us about it. <laughs> like, that was the premise, yeah. right? It was like, come, yeah. And then, um, uh, and then we had, uh, what else? I had the interviews, I had the sketches that we would do. And then, um, and then we, did we have performances? Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we had performances Ready and stuff. Ready D. Yeah, yeah, Ready yeah, D. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I didn't have Ready, Ready D on the T on the radio show, right. and I didn't have him on the ETV show. The ETV show was in a virtual set. Oh, oh yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then I had Leo on sports. Yeah. Before Robert Marawa, there was Leo. Mm. Leo was the PSL football guy. Mm. So I was like, as long as those elements, because it would make it easier for us to still do a morning show and do a TV show. They loved it. We did a pilot. Next thing you know, we're on the air. I was the first show targeting all South Africans on ETV. When I say all South Africans, 
black, black. white, Indian colored grandma, father, mother, son, Shit. daughter, babies. And you nailed it. The, the show goes off first month. They don't have to sell any advertising. They're just answering the phone. Hmm. They don't have to leave the building. The phone is ringing. And from that day on, they changed from colored Indian channel to a South African channel. So then they gave him Fundi backstage. And then, they gave, and then they gave Felicia her show. Yes. But man, I'm telling you, God, G-O-D, uh, man. How does it shit. look? Shit. Shit. Mm. And when does it go to not to ETV? I mean, to SABC. Because I heard you got a big bag for that. A what? A big bag. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, SABC was like, we poaching this show. And that's all it was. They mm. poached me. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Fuck. Sure. My favorite episode, <laughs> Joe once, he went to the mall, right? <laughs> and he goes to like two niggas, right? He's like, if you guys kiss, I'll give you a thousand rand or 10,000, whatever much it was. Mm. And then they kiss. After they kiss, he, <laughs> he runs away. But it wasn't just kiss. It was like, <laughs> it wasn't just kiss. There was some rules. It was like, you have to lock lips for 30 seconds and there must be tongue. <laughs> One time I did it on radio, <laughs> and it was two cousins. Oh, shit. And they were like, they looked at each other. The one cousin said, nah. <laughs> the other cousin grabbed him by the collar and said, my, my man, we need the money. We're going to do this. And next thing you know, they locked lips. <laughs> For 30 seconds. Oh, shit. I, what would you say you prefer better, radio or TV? Or was it just the same thing for you, man? I see it all the same. I, I, this is also the other thing. Because I've produced TV, you see, like, when we did this. Yeah, you produced I this. produced it. Yeah, yeah. I it's, want my credit. I show. produced this entire show, right? <laughs> so I, um, I approach radio from a television production mindset. Oh. So that's why people are like, how do you do this and that and that? It's because I've had to work really hard with a small team to produce TV. Mm. So now when you have to produce radio But you're bringing the TV mentality The quality goes It's just a lot better I'll give you an example You call a guest Yo, will you come and interview? Come do an interview? Yeah, yeah, yeah Sure, I'll see you there at, t at 10 mm. And let's say your show's from 10 to 12 And the dude arrives at 11.45 Yeah Oh, he doesn't arrive Yeah In TV There's a way in which you book it. I keep hitting the mic There's a way in which you book an interview That guarantees the guest will arrive there's a number of things that you have to do. Not only that they'll arrive, they'll arrive early and they'll arrive on time. I mean, they'll arrive early and that they definitely will arrive. Am I, am I, I'm repeating myself. Yeah, it guarantees that they'll arrive and that they'll arrive on time, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I bring that approach to radio. Most guys are still in the radio mindset doing like things that get them entangled. That's why if I do a radio show, every day I got dope guests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without fail. I don't know if you saw, like on 2000, we had epic like interviews. We were doing like four interviews a show. Shit. Yeah. I'd have like a guy come in, do a motivation. I'd have a guy come in, do a, a, a business interview. And then I'd have an entertainment interview. And then we'd have like a special guest telephonic something yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Guaranteed daily. How do you do that for TV, you were saying? No, that, I, you know, it's a long story, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. All right, cool. I got some questions from my chillers, man. Uh, someone wants to know, was he a late bloomer? You a late bloomer? Yes. For real? Yeah. When did you break it? When you say, what did I, what did I break what? Your virginity. 17? 17? 18? It's not a late 17, bloomer, 17. man. Well, coming from the States, dudes are doing it at 11, 12, 13. Ooh, I went to high, when I, in high school, 12-year-old girls were pregnant. Shit. So I always felt like I was a late bloomer, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Do you still remember? Remember what? The girl and how it happened? Yes. Are you going to tell us? No. <laughs> To protect the girl, man, like you know, she's old, bro. Yeah, but it was like, hey, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't nice. Yeah, like uh, it wasn't even, yeah, it was. And then, and then, and and in that same period, it was like a, a yeah, it was a dodgy story that I'll never share. Come that on, happened. dude. I guess is this that I was sixteen? Yeah, I guess you could argue if an older girl. Sleeps with a 16-year-old. Is that is that rape? Is that statutory rape? It is. Yeah, it I, is. Yeah, then I, yeah, no, I was raped. You were raped? I know I was raped, my bitch. <laughs> hey, my bitch, hey, I was raped. You no, know, why are you so fucked up? No, I was raped. <laughs> I was seriously raped. And uh, 
I've been trying to rebuild my life ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to rebuild my life ever since, man. It's been difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, someone asked, uh, can you tell us about how you overcame the trauma that was caused by the passing of his ex-girlfriend? That was tough. That was rough. Because I love that girl. Mm. And um, she taught me so much about humility, being given, giving, being kind. She was a glamorous, beautiful girl. Yeah. I was supposed to do a photo shoot with Naomi Campbell, and the guy saw her and said, let's do it with her. Wow. That's how dope she was. Oh, my gosh. What happened to her? How did she pass she, away? She slit her wrists, then she hung herself on a ceiling fan. Damn. Hey, dick. A lot behind that story. She had suffered a lot of abuse as a young person. Adopted families. Apartheid had split her family apart. She had a Zulu mom. And a British dad. You know, the born a crime story that Trevor Noah talks about. Mm. And uh, they put them, they put kids like that in foster homes. And um, yeah, still a sad story, man. You're going to make me cry. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sure. And, but not, now you're good. You're in a happy marriage. Love my wife. Hey, baby. Yeah. I was just talking to her now. Um, we both have a beautiful, gorgeous girl who I'm in love with. She's 20 months old. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Mm. How did you meet your wife? She stalked me. <laughs> <laughs> she followed me for years till yeah. she got me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, first, on our first date. <laughs> first date. First date. We're sitting here eating meat. And she said, you're going to be my husband. Oh, shit. Oh. Hey. I was like, this is a psycho girl. <laughs> you know, I've heard about these type of girls. And yeah. here I am, married to her. Yeah. Uh, With all these cases coming out, you know, like allegations, the fresh thing, Greg Maloka thing, because you were part of that era. What's your take on that? I was a part of what era? What, look at him trying to bring me in. <laughs> I had nothing to do with any of those guys. And the allegations that they've... Have been put against them. Yeah. Look, man, I've got my own take on things. What is your take? Um, the, in a lot of the working environments that I've been in, you know, coming from the States, like the Me Too thing, mm. you, you, it, it, it's been dead serious since I was a kid. For real? No, yeah. What, what I mean by me too is you, you. There's certain things you can't do, otherwise you're gonna go to jail. So I come from a culture where um, you're scared to even cross certain lines. Then I come here and I see the lines being crossed all the time. Oh. Something simple like hugging your colleagues at the office. That's a no-no in other parts of the world. But here it's like dudes pursue it, push it. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, that's sexual harassment, but all right. Um, I think South Africa just has culturally um, certain things that are allowed to be done that kind of cross the line and enter that gray area. And um, it's difficult sometimes to now go back, especially now that we're looking to the West and say, oh, that is a, a Me Too moment. So I'm going to say I'm going to say it. Mm. Um, sometimes it's, 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 it's girls who are pushing their own agenda. Sometimes it's stories that are made up, but sometimes it's the truth. Mm. Yeah. I'm not going to say who, how, what, where, and I'm, I'm not saying that I know, but I know that there's gray areas and lines that have been crossed and, um, I don't know. If you were to, no. see, if you, if you saw something like that, like back then, would you approach the guy and say, Hey, dude, what I are you doing? I couldn't, man, because mm. what do you do? The dude's hugging the girl, the girl's hugging the guy back and they're smiling. What you gonna say? Yeah. Hey guys, this is not right. Yeah, yeah. It's not right what you two are doing. Yeah. Like, who do you blame? Yeah. It's difficult. Hey, but it's crazy right now, man. It's lit. Because the story's from like back then. Yeah, that's if they're true, you know? Mm. That's if they're true. Um, I, I, I think that uh, South African women do endure a lot. I, I, I really empathize and sympathize. And I, I more than anything want South African women to win because. And by win, I don't mean like they become rich or anything like that. I mean like win 
in terms of life fulfillment and life actualization. You know yeah. what I mean? Because if they, if, if, if our women succeed, the rest of the country succeeds. 100%. And if they don't, well, then you get damaged children and mm. the cycle continues. Yes. And so I really yeah. wish that, I always say like, even during apartheid, Households were still intact despite the chaos. Mm. There was usually a, a male, a mother, mother, father, or a male figure, female figure in the house, mm. and no child raised themselves. Mm. Now, mm. so I'm always rooting for women, man. But you must have had some wild nights, man. I remember you were talking. Absolutely, about, they had a party, eh, hey, so where between um, nine and eleven, only women were allowed in the club. Hey. And it was live on the radio. So by 11 o'clock, there was like a whole line of niggas outside trying to get in. Yeah, it was, a, it was a strip show. It was called Fresh and Fat Joe Uncovered. It was at Cash 21 where uh, Taboo, not Taboo, is it Taboo? Not Taboo, where uh, King Kong, Maloko, whatever, I don't know, they keep changing their names. Yeah. That, that, that used to be a club called Cash 21. Yeah. And we did a party there, me and Fresh, and we promised a strip for the ladies. And yeah. we said from six to nine only ladies, um, nine after, guys can come in. And we broadcast it live on the radio. You can't and, do that now, And eh? we had choreographed <laughs> everything. It was epic. Outside, there was like 400 cars. Wow. Was Rosebank was just roadblock. It was guys. <laughs> their girls were inside. They were listening on the radio. They could hear their girls screaming. They don't know what's going on. Inside, me and Fresh are stripping for the ladies. We did two <laughs> routines. We had these beautiful girls in bikinis and thongs on stage with us. And like, I remember the one routine, we came out in military uniform. I had a sailor suit, he had on like a, like a general suit. And we had these naked girls with these big water guns filled with baby oil. Eh. And as we strip, my man, they're just spraying us. Hey. We're getting slippery, the girls are trying to grab us. <laughs> You know, you take off the first, you take off the top, the pants, and you're wearing like boxers. And you, you take off the vest and the shirt, and then you, and then you take off the boxers, and you got on like briefs. Then you take off the briefs, and then you got the thong, and then you take off the thong, and then you got the tiny, tiny thong. You got the shoestring, you know. But we didn't go nude, but it was like, and the girls were so lit, man. It was so nice. And then um, I remember at some point. We each grabbed a girl, tied them to a chair, and did the whole, you know, yeah. grinding on them routine. The girls were, like, on such a high. They were on 10 in that room. On 10. At the end of the night, I had to have one of my friends, like, protect me like this, because <laughs> girls were just like, no, yeah. you're mine. You're mine. You are mine. You are mine. Yeah. With their men outside. Yeah. And then when the men, when we opened the doors to the men, they couldn't come in because we were full. <laughs> They had to wait for one girl to come out, one guy comes in, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? That yeah, type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lockdown restrictions. And then I had to hightail it out of there because I DJed after that and then I, I jetted. It was too much. It was just crazy. T tell me a weekend in your life back then, man, like the, some of the wild times you had, like crazy shit you did. Bro. It wasn't wild, man. Like it sounds like it was rock and roll, but we were working. Mm. We were working hard. So think about this. I'm doing a, a morning show. Yeah. Five to nine, mm. Monday to Friday. I'm producing a TV show. It's live Thursday nights, uh, 9 to 10. And then I'm doing gigs. two to three gigs on, on the weekend. Ooh. So does it sound like I'm having You're fun? You're pushing music. You had music videos. Yeah. Does it sound like I'm having fun? No, we're working. Mm. But we're having so much fun, it looks like we're partying. Did you ever dabble in drugs? Never. Nothing? Never. I drank. And then I, haven't, I stopped drinking six, seven years ago. Shit, why did you stop? Um, I just get sick, you know? Oh, yeah, same here. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, never drugs. People think that I did, but from the very beginning, because I was so hype on radio, but it was performance. Yeah. You know, I, I took it like I was performing. So people were like, he has to be on drugs. Yeah. I was never, never did a line of coke. Um, I might have smoked herb a few times. Never did an E. Never did a pill or this or that. None of that, ever. They say that about, about me all the time as well. They think I'm on drugs. Well, you look it. You look like you're, you're, you're smoking. He looks like a smoker, man. You got the ashy burnt lips. The dreads, the sleepy red eyes. You got the look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's put it like that. Okay, cool. Someone asked, what happened between you and Kanyimbao? Because I had her on the show and she said she wasn't really nice to you. 
She said that. Yeah. She said she wasn't nice to me. Yeah, like you try to reach out to her and then. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She knows. No, um, we did a show together, and then after that, like we got closer, mm -hmm. and then I would uh, she, you know, I'd be like, yo, come here or do this or go there, and then she would just ditch me, just like that. Yeah, but I, I think it was more because like, Kanye's like. If she's got three options, she's gonna go to the option that like is the most lit in her mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Whatever is lit for like for Kanye, she's you know she's in love right now. <laughs> <laughs> she's in love. Did, did did you smash a lot of these celebs? Huh? Did you smash a lot What? of these celebs? Huh? Did you smash a lot I can't of these? Hear. <laughs> smash a lot of these celebrities. Yeah, hey, not a lot, but your a hit few. list must be crazy, man. No, it's like you're in the industry. That's who you meet. You end up dating. Yeah. My first girlfriend here was like the girl from uh, 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 what was it? Uh, Selim Atunzi. Yeah, yeah. Pushy, like you know, that's a, that was a celebrity. She was part of a band. Oh, yeah. She was an artist. Jam Alley. Jam Alley. No, Jam Alley. I'm not telling him to Jam Alley. Jam Alley. Yeah, that was like my first girlfriend in oh, Joburg. You know what I mean? fire, bro. Tell me about it, man. Mm. Fire then, flames, dude. Yeah. yeah I remember I Best first, I first saw her. I first, I'm not going to say. I first saw her. <laughs> Come on, God. I first saw her. <laughs> I first saw her modeling in a magazine. And I remember, you know, like you, you know how guys be at home at their parents' house, but you're like a prisoner. Yeah. So you're like tearing fly girls out and you're putting them on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. was one of those girls. I, I was I, like, <laughs> I was like, this girl, man, if only. And then I met her. Yeah. With her boyfriend, I lost my mom. <laughs> and then I never let it go. And then before you knew it, we were living together. Shit. Yeah. I had those. I, I Love used to that use the, the FHM magazine. Yeah. FHM. Yeah. Yeah. Halle Definitely. Berry and all of them. All of them. Yeah. So, so when you're in the industry, they're like, You know, you people see it's like the Instagram girls now. A lot of people look at the Instagram girls and go, "Oh," but that's that's who we see a lot. So mm, you can end up dating an Instagram girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool, man. And then what's the what's the plan now, bro? What you busy with now? You're doing so much, man. Yeah. Are we gonna have another cheeky palette? Season two? I, I was on the phone. You know, people are so excited about that show, and I was just doing it as a once-off. Shout out to Basitana. She and her team worked for years on that concept. And you, people think a show like that happens overnight. No, two, three years, maybe even longer. Um, um, but it's been such a huge success. Shout out to the team, Jafta, um, uh, Connect TV. I think it's going to come back. I think people want it back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but there's a lot going on, man. Um, I've got a new... Sh I've got, I think this year, one, two... Three, four, five TV shows you'd probably Shit, see me man. on. Maybe a sixth one as well. Yeah, mm. six TV shows, yeah. How, what's the secret to longevity? Because you've been in the game since I was in diapers, bro. It's just working. Mm. Um, a lot of people don't learn. They don't grow. They don't study. They stop studying. They think they've arrived. And they don't continue to build networks, connect with people, uh, and keep their hearts open to new ideas. Um, oftentimes when you do something You get stuck in I'm the podcast guy That's all I do mm. But if you open you, If you open up And say if people bring New and fresh ideas I'll try them You learn You expand And you grow And that's what keeps you going mm. So it's connecting With new people Being open to working With new people On new ideas Giving of yourself To others mm. A lot of times People don't realize this A lot of the opportunities I've gotten was because I gave myself Freely to people And it came back With Tenfold. something Yeah Yeah, yeah. Dude, how many people have you put on? You've put on so many people. Saul, do you know, bro? No. Dada Man. Well, David Kajizo, Kao. David Kao. Yeah. There wouldn't be a PMS without Fat Joe, bro. True. But there's so many others that you guys don't even know of behind the scenes. Directors, uh, producers, mm. um, writers. Amanda Dupont, you put on. <laughs> no, she did, she did um, RGB and um, they'd already been... Pearl, no, Brenda, and then Pearl, and then I think Amanda. Um, so, no, and she was already doing a little bit of acting. She had been on Mubango, et cetera. Yeah. 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 But you gave her a cosign. Well, yeah. Mm. I, maybe, I, if you call it that, yeah. Yeah. What's Shout out to Amanda. 
I feel like he's, he, before he gives you a cosign, he's got to smash, eh? <laughs> oh, so you think I smashed that man? You think I smashed that people? You think I smashed David Cow? <laughs> Huh? They would have me too you by now. If you, you know what I mean? Yeah. They would have me no, you're right. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. How did PMS come about, bro? That was it. Wasn't my idea, but um, it was Kahiso's idea in his production, and he he put the show together while he was working for me under under salary from my production company. But that's what I wanted. I wanted guys to flourish and grow and do their thing. So he came with us, and his first production work was, was with us. I came. I literally picked him up from Cape Town and brought him. Uh, and paid him a salary so he could get a place and like we started working on content radio and TV and he took that went to PMS and started creating TV shows and he built Deprente and now they've got like Queen Sono Dude. and da 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 so yeah when you see that unfold are you like shit man yeah I love it man like even like the fact that in a way I help mentor them and cultivate a certain aspect of, of, of their careers and then they cultivated guys like like Nick <laughs> this is a crazy story, so I'm gonna help you connect the dots. So, I'm on the radio. There's a guy called Nick Regisford. He's in the UK. He's finishing uh, broadcasting school. I say, my brother, fly to South Africa. I got a job for you. You're gonna come work with me. He flies the SA, starts working with me. We part ways. He goes and runs a, a comedy club at uh, at the at Blues Room. Uh, in the old uh, Throp Center, I think it's, I think, was it Throps? No, it wasn't Throps. You see where the mark is? The old mall that was there. And that's before our time, bro. Yeah, there was a, there was a club in there called Blues, uh, Blues Room. They used to do comedy nights there. I fly Cajiso to come work with me, David Cow. They start working and building the comedy, the black comedy scene here. Mm. They, Nick starts a comedy night, open mic night at Blues Room. Yeah. Joey Rosdeen is selling insurance and he starts hanging out with us and I put him in the title sequence of my show and we start putting him in sketches and yeah. he's hanging around with comics and he becomes a comedian. Wow. Whoa. Joey Rosdeen develops his comedy at Blues Room where Nick is running the comedy night. Trevor Noah does his first open mic night at Blues Room Whoa. and is mentored by all those guys. Joey, Cajiso, oh, David. David. He's Daily Show. Like, and, and we're still on the journey. Shit. Cajiso is Queen Sono, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? Mm. And I can go on. There's a girl who worked with me. She was a production, a line, line producer. She ended up being a director, six cameras. One female of color. She goes to the States with her husband, ends up becoming uh, MD of Sesame Street, Middle East. Wow. Africa. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's a lot of stories like that. And that's what I love about what, about the, for me, I don't look at, oh, we created so many viewers or we did this. I look at those as the, the main accomplishments and the things that get me excited at night. What do you get? I mean, when I wake up in the morning or when I, when I, yeah. What do you get this work ethic? Is it from your parents? Yeah, or? yeah, it's parents. Parents, yeah. yeah. So I don't chase money. I chase opening doors, doing Fuck. cool stuff and building communities. Yeah. Yeah. That's so dope, bro. Uh, speaking about communities, what's your relationship like with the LGBTI community? I know they're hating you now. <laughs> they're hating you. But you know what the problem with the LB LGBT community is? They're the most organized social media crew on planet Earth. Yeah. So you can't win. If, you, if they feel like it's your time to be you know, taught a lesson, you're going to be taught a lesson on social media. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. You just have to ride it out, take it in the face. <laughs> you have to take it. In the face. Yeah. 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 I remember I called him during the scandal. Oh, yeah? And he's like, yo, bro, face the fire, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, but uh, I've got no issues, you know. I think that I've got, I've got certain views about LGBTQ that would piss them off. Mm. And because of that, out of respect, I don't always articulate it, but I don't necessarily agree with everything that they're on about. And I think they don't even agree amongst each other with everything. You know what I mean? Mm. They fight amongst each other. And then if you, you know, it's weird. Have you ever been with a guy? Have I ever been with a guy? <laughs> no, have you? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, have you? <laughs> I've, never, I've never been with a guy, but I do think if I went to prison, it's on. <laughs> Ah, no, good luck with your own touch. 
Eki chau nyo banta. Yo. And when you are soft. Takwa, takwa. Let me talk to you for a minute. Yeah, pull up the sheet, my brother. Pull up the sheet. Yeah, cut his shorts. I want it to be like a skirt. From now on, JS may be fi, ne? JS may be fi. How are things with you and Anele? Anele mtota. I love Anele. You know, Anele is another one. So I, I speak about, uh, um, I speak about, uh, what's her name from Metro? Social Butterfly? Uh, Penny. Penny, 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 yes. Um, you know, we've gone at different people. Um, so she was on Highfeld, same time we were on. And I remember when I, was ta- when I thought of the idea, I was like, this is going to trend like wildfire. And I was like, what she doesn't realize It's like is that I have no beef with her and I don't even have like a a view or a this I actually love and appreciate what she's doing mm. and I respect what she's doing but what she doesn't realize is what I did was so calculated mm. to bring a spotlight to me on 2000 mm. it was like I used her and she fell for the trap oh. I used her to create attention to make her listeners tune into us to know that we exist oh. and then to And then, oh, and then, and then I could have taken it so much further. Like, she doesn't realize, and I and and I say this because I know she's upset with me. But I, she doesn't realize that I could have taken it so far that I I could have gotten her off the air, as in like no more high felt. Yeah. Because the way she was responding, I could have turned it up a notch, thrown in BCCSA complaint, did the Me Too thing because the things she was saying. She was so hysterical that I could have forced an apology back to me, had her suspended, did all types of things. But what I did was when I saw that she was having a meltdown, mm. I stopped. Mm. And I even spoke to her boss and I said, listen, man, this is all just games. And then I called her. And when I called her, we had a little bit of a heart to heart. But I think she didn't understand where I was coming from. I, I basically was like, look. I respect you. I admire what you're doing. You are at the top of the food chain as far as radio broadcasting because you're doing mornings at Highfeld. Mm. If I attack someone else, I'm being a hypocrite. Mm. I have to attack you. Mm. And I have to find the lowest hanging fruit to attack you with. Oh. With me, people make fun of my lips. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So that's why I own the lips. I was like, fat lips, meth, you know, so you can't make fun of my lips. <sighs> the lowest hanging fruit is the lowest hanging fruit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, look, she's judging this essay. Something doesn't fit, <laughs> right? And I looked at the judging panel and I was like, there it is. And I went on the air and you know what I did? I said, I'm not gonna say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna ask. Yeah, yeah. So I think I went on the air and I forget who the judges were. I was like, yo, the Miss Essay is gonna happen this weekend. It's going down, it's blazing. We got so-and-so. And she was formerly Miss This, Miss That, did this, did that. She's on the judging panel. Master Chinese Anja, and we give her applause. And then I said, we've also got so-and-so. She was a model actress. Nah, 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 nah. Hand, 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 hand. And everybody had this pedigree of having something to do with beauty, modeling, and da-da-da-da. <laughs> and then I said, and then we have Anel. <laughs> and everybody was like, what the? What the? And then it started on Twitter. And then I was like, but yeah, but really, man, there's something wrong here. Why? And then I think I started questioning how she got the gig. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It was strategic. It was classic radio. And it's like, come on, man. We're all adults. We've all been on a, on a playground where we make fun of each other. Yeah. We all have imperfections and things like that. And so I went, for the, I, I went below the belt. But once again, it was strategic. Mm. Man, her, her people were like, Joe was talking crap about you. So she's doing her show. She's seeing social media. She lost her mind, had a meltdown. And then she, I think she couldn't even be on the air. Yeah. And then, like... You got to remember, I hear all types of things from everywhere. Mm. You hear staff members who go, no, so-and-so is not a nice person or, or they're not nice to me. So like we're getting cheered on by people around her. Mm. She's not even aware of that. Damn. But anyways, I stopped. I could have gone further, but I stopped yeah. because I wanted her to fight back yeah. on the air. Yeah, yeah. And she didn't. And I, I could have I could have finished it. Sealed it and it's wrapped. But my, I'm not out to try and destroy any any career, especially that of a black woman, yeah. at all. Yeah. Which is why I called and or I, I I I called and spoke to. Well, they called me, but me and Ravi have a relationship. I spoke to Ravi, 
And then I even called her. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Because it was just, it was purely broad. You know how they, as they say in rap, it's, it's just rap. Yeah. It's just hip hop. It's for the culture. It was just broadcasting. Yeah, yeah. And that's all it was. Have you ever gone to toe to toe with someone and they give you a run for their money? No, because I don't know. I seem to, I'm not a comic, but I have, a com I have comedic timing. So if you don't have that, you, 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 you. What do you mean by that? Meaning like, you have, a, jo a joke is not about just what you say. It's about what you say when. <laughs> yeah. And so sometimes people don't know that. And if you don't get that, and if you don't know how to kill them with the jokes. So I'll kill you with the jokes. And I haven't met somebody who could match me toe to toe in real time in that space. I'm not a comic. I don't write routines and perform them. Mm. I write sketches, skits, scripts, bits, da 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 da. I'm that guy. Yeah. And I don't know where it comes from, but I have that natural ability. Fuck, I would have loved to go toe to toe with you, man. Nah, you would have lost. <laughs> No, you would have lost. <laughs> you would have lost. <laughs> no, dog, I, I, I play so hard. Like, I can get you off the air. I can make you lose everything that you hold dear without lifting a finger, just opening my mouth. Shit, I heard some... Come I've had the... I've gone toe-to-toe gone -to -toe with the press. The press tried to catch me in some scandal one time, and I played ball, and they entered... They fell into my trap, and then they had to... Withdraw, apologize, da, da 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 But I saw it coming, and they now know not to mess with me. But I'm not scared. Mm. I'm not scared. That's the thing. I'll go anywhere and everywhere. Mm. And what do you think about cancel culture? It doesn't exist. They tried to cancel Trump, but Trump is still the biggest thing ever. Mm. Biggest. They're trying just to cancel because, us. Just because you're not on social media or they take you, they kill your social media account, doesn't mean when you you can't. Gather a crowd of 10,000 people to talk. Mm. There's no such thing as cancel culture. Yeah. It's all in our minds. Yeah. yeah. All right, Joe, you got a special guest, bro. I got a special guest for you, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm supposed to introduce him for you. Yeah. Um, firstly, I produced this show. Yeah, this yeah. is the Fat Joe Show. But I brought a special gift uh, from a man. <laughs> uh, he wanted to do an interview, so I always bring a little extra value. Yeah. With Fresh, I brought strippers when he inter interviewed me. With you, I've got a special guest. He used to be an international blesser. He retired the name. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Serge Kabonge. Serge, hey, 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 hey. come here, man. Hey, Serge. I remember watching the cheeky pellet. I thought he retired. <laughs> Take a seat, my brother. Take a seat, Serge. I'm gonna go so wash my hands. Yeah, sit there, sit there, sit, sit there, there, sit there, sit there. Go in. Let me grab the the seat. How are you, Serge? Yeah, I'm alright, my man. Last time I saw you was Checkpoint. What's that show? I think it was in Checkpoint. Huh? Checkpoint, ne? And then we come again to hit in the last show. The show that you know is going virus around all over the country. Yeah. That's I think the last show that you see me and then social media again. Why, That's where you see me all the time. Why are you retiring as a blesser? Yeah, I'm tired of that game, trust me. <laughs> I'm really tired, you know. We wanted to entertain the public, you know. When you start in the game, there's a time that way you feel like you, you don't want to continue in the game anymore because, you know, we have a certain things that is coming around, you understand? Yeah. How people look at you. You know how some people are just sitting, creating social media, creating, you know, negative things yeah. in your name without even them knowing how you build your yourself legacy, to yeah. become, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Like we, we, we do a lot of things, you understand that? Eh? And then I decided to say, let me come out of the page. Yeah, but everybody wants to be a blessing right now. Hey, why retire, dog? Hey. Look, look. Uh, we decided to build the blesser lifestyle. You know, you need to give over to those who feel like they want to continue on the game. You understand? Doesn't mean because I retire from the game and then the next No, he did my show. Yeah. And on the show, he was like, you know what? I get it now. Yeah. I retire. I saw. I <laughs> He's saw. trying to be all political now. <laughs> no, we've changed strategy. <laughs> da, 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 da. We released a public relations statement. No, he quit on the... Penny was get, letting him have it. Yeah. And he was like, I quit. How, how does your friendship start with, with, uh, with You know, with I, Joe? I, I, Joe Show, I used to be a guest in Joe Show. Oh. Joe was having one of the biggest shows in the country. Yeah. That I've been looking for the opportunity one day to be as a guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? That's how we become to know me and Joe. You understand? Oh. Yeah. So you was like I a character. Yeah. No, I interviewed him. He had a... 
he had a story in the paper. I forget what story it was. And he was trying to clear his name. And we were like, come on down. Yeah. We love uh, uh, gossip and stuff like that. And so we spoke on that. And then we've had a relationship ever since. I don't know what happens in Dubai when you take these girls there. Look, when we take the girl in Dubai, we go like to have just fun, you know, to entertain people. Come on, Sharj, you're not telling the truth, man. In Dubai, uh, uh, it goes down. When the when the slay queens go to Dubai, what happens? Yeah. Like that's what I'm saying. It's part of the game. Yeah, yeah but, but what, what happens? But what happens to them? What? No. Tell us the stories. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Man, that's I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them are forced to give camels blowjobs. Camels. Oh. Some of them get crapped on in the face, in the stomach. Yeah. yeah. They're forced to have all types of crazy, wild sex with different people and, yeah. the and they get paid for that saying, it not only truth. happens in the Middle East Dubai but sometimes when they go to the Seychelles as well that's what goes down yeah. it's but just that, sodomy that's man that's all it is we, we don't yeah. force them you understand yeah, yeah. that's why they choose you understand I don't want people tomorrow to come to say so okay you've... look you took the girl in Dubai you took the girl so in you, the you, USA you, you've shit on someone why, what do you mean I'm saying, like, take Have a shit. Have you taken a crap on somebody's on face? Yeah. Why not? Those things happen. Oh, Have you done that? Those oh. things happen. But Have you done that? <laughs> Look, I can say, Danny, those things happen. You've done you it. Understand? <laughs> So look, you've done that. Look, look, that. look, look where Joe is taking me down. But why would you, you do that? Like, why, why would you do that? Man, we we want to have no, a... Hold on, hold on. Is it sex or is it to dehumanize... No, 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 no. We want to have a fun. What, what can we do? Ah, Where's the fun? Ah, Where's... Man. You enjoy that. My nigga, you, you cannot do something that you're not enjoying. I can't co-sign so, this, that's man. That's what's during those time. You understand? I can't co-sign that, That's what's during those time. Hey, that was an error. <laughs> that was an error. <laughs> I can call it as an error. You understand? You yeah. understand? On yeah. that basis, we can put it on that line. You understand? <laughs> so do you like eat a full meal before the girl comes? Like, what? what's the story? Look. He's got to eat before I'm the... A, I'm a man. You understand? What do you think men always deserve? What men prefer? Who doesn't Sir, prefer it? You know what you got to ask, Serge? This is what I, you see I'm taking over now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Serge did... How much, you did, how much time did you do in jail? Uh, I did almost about seven years. Eight seven months, years in jail. But now it was a, it was a political... Uh, what was it? Actually, uh, one of my ex, you know, he went to flame me to... Actually, not flame. You know, we were in the relationship and so then we it, broke up. And then he went to tell the police, he said, I don't keep money in the bank. You know, he showed the police that uh, I have a sofa and then I, make, uh, I call a specialist. Mm. who come to do a zip in the sofa. Even when I have a visitor in the house, when you come in, you want to see that the money is inside the sofa. You, you understand? Those who was during those times, those couple of years, let's say, during uh, 1999, you understand? So and, you basically, I like, kept money in his mattress, but it was in the sofa. Yeah, I was in the sofa. You understand? I don't want to keep money in the bank. You understand? Because of certain, you know? How uh, are you making this money? Look. There was many directions where we've been making money during the time without paying tax, you know, in the country where you have some little business where you pull money in, you understand? You don't prefer to put those money in the, in the bank account and I prefer to keep it on the, in the house, you understand? That's why I decided, let me just do my own save and then I do my own save in the sofa. That's where I was keeping my money. And then when we separate with the girl, the girl went to give information to the police and then oh. they come, they caught me. And then when the police tried to go deep, he found out that he said, I'm doing money laundering. Who was I'm it? No, 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 no. That was a couple of years ago. That was oh, in okay. 1999. Okay. Why okay. do you say only no Makigaba? Because... Uh, because I don't see anything with Noma Kigaba when you say like this, you give example oh, of no, who, who said Noma Kigaba? Oh. <laughs> Why is it? 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 Why is Kigaba, oh, your girl is yeah, snitching girl. on you. Yeah, let, let's say like that, you understand? Mm. Yeah. Because on some of the get, that's what we see around sometime. So, in the... I wanted to get that out. So, he did seven years in jail. Uh -huh. What was going on in the prison with guys like and, and, and sex and stuff like that. Look. Even Where were you, Sun City? No, no, no. I was in Pretoria, New York prison. Okay. Pretoria, you know, yeah. Yeah, that was one of the best, I can call it that was one of the best prison, you know, around South Africa, you understand? Yeah. With the news that I hear compared with Sun City, even if i never been there. But what is, what is going there. down there? What is no, that? they say there's a man who sleep with another man most of the time there, you know. There's too many gangs in prison, you yeah. know, a lot of things, and then the condition, yeah. you know, they try to limit certain conditions. Yeah. But when I compare Sun City in the prison where I used to be in Pretoria, I feel like I was in the hotel, in the five-star hotel. Wow, were well, you someone's because, girlfriend? No, I never been, I never allowed that. For me not to allow that, what I did, when I went in, 
you know, I meet people. You understand? Some of people didn't like me who come around me to advise me. Yeah. And then I decided to get a number from prison, you know, to come one of the gangsters uh -huh. so I can try to protect myself. So, But you have to do man. something to get that number. You can't just get a no, number. No, no, no. It depends what type of number. I was not 26. I was just a force three. Uh, you know? Yeah. Oh, so is that a gang? Yeah. So you have that. to be part of a gang to... Just to protect to survive, yourself. Yeah. yeah. To survive in prison so that... It, uh, 26 doesn't just come to you like that, you know, to try to do, so you to know, become, to make you So like to become an Air Force 3, what do you have to do? do you, I mean, there's always initiation. Just, just to join, you understand, to join the team and then to be part of their meetings, okay. you know, to get the number. So you don't have to do anything crazy. Like, you always hear stories that there's initiations that no, are... No, 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 no. There's always rules when you come Air Force 3. Air Force 3 is somebody that... He, who doesn't live in prison. When there's a time of escape, you need to leave. You need to go part of that. You need to escape together with them. And then when the correctional service hear that they was escaping prison, they'll, they'll chase after people with number. Don't the most people is the Air Force 3 and the Air Force 4. And then I was Air Force 3 just to protect myself. Did you guys prison. ever break out? What do you mean break out? Escape from prison? No, no, I never done it, man. Okay. There was a couple of escape in prison, and oh, then I was okay. not part of that. I, oh, di I didn't okay. want to involve myself. So what, did you, what did you do when you were horny? Uh, when I horny, you know, we are men. You know, you can't go touch another man. It's better just you go somewhere in the corner, you play with your dick, you yeah, understand? Okay. Until you satisfy yourself, and then go back in your bed. What were you, you thinking about? Because there's no uh, phone, so you can't go to... You porn or whatever. Look, you can think about bring your mind back with your exes, you know, those exes <laughs> they used to be thick, huh? With big ass. Yeah, yeah. You just go with your mind. You, you become creative with yourself. the brain, man. <laughs> yeah, you just create yourself you're thinking about during yeah. those times. Do you think Joe has... would last in prison? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think so. Joe does, you know, look here. Joe doesn't look like a man who cannot sit inside the prison. Joe life, good life Soft outside. Life. You understand? Soft yeah. life. Yeah. And then I don't think, you understand? Yeah. Trust me, you oh, know, shit, it won't. Man, this man I'd be the biggest Me Too gangster in jail. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> There'd be so many Me Too prisoners. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Joe, thank you so much for coming through, man. No, well, he's got a, uh, he, he needs your help or something, man. Oh, yeah, what's happening? Oh, what's happening? Let's go on here. Look here. Uh, I'm running an entertainment uh, called Rails Group International. Okay. I focus most uh, on building, you know, newcom, let's say, uh, newcom artists, yeah. newcom DJ, good looking. Yeah, yeah. People can pull the crowd, you know, producer people can run, like the good team that I can see you have, yeah. professional people when it comes in terms of cameras, you understand yeah, yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I was in the USA last of last year in yeah. Los Angeles. I do most of my work that side there. Nice. There was a team that appointed. Actually, I never pointed them. There was a friend who referred me to those teams who come to me as a... They are professional people. They can do These are things. guys who've worked on things like um, uh, Straight Outta Compton. Oh, shit. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. This is deep. You understand? Um, celebrities. There were some celebrities, major celebrities you've seen on TV that yeah. were part of the team. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I pointed the team and then I paid them almost like about 22,000 US dollars. Yeah. We talk about almost about 300,000. They say they can, they can do the show. 100%. And then I decided to come with that idea during that time when I used to be what you call blesser. You understand mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. We wanted to show different angle of what the people and special public, what did they were taking this life oh, of blesser. You understand? Okay. Where we do like a bachelor. Yeah. Where we bring a lot of American girls. We mix them with African girl on the oh, show. Oh, wow. Where we will be choosing, will be winning the blesser. You understand? Man, oh. We wanted it in the proper direction. Nice. The team that I paid the money and then, you know, they did few things that I'll be giving it to you. Oh, shit. And then you'll see where you can put it. Ah, and then what I'm clean. looking now, uh, special, this young and newcom uh, producer, yeah. people feel like it, they can do better than what they can see in your link yeah. when I give you the footage and yeah. the video. Yeah. Those who they feel that they can do better, let yeah. them come to me, contact me. Ah, perfect. My email address that is search.kabong at gmail.com. Yeah. Or they can go to my social media on the Instagram. You know, everybody know my Instagram. Let them send their proposal. If they feel they can do better than what I get. Are they going to be let shooting them... in SA or America? No, what I'll do, since uh, we want to bring something different mm. in the country, because look, you must never amend I uh, I'm an I, like people in South Africa, those who do like a producer, those are special on the shooting. Okay. Don't abandon them, you understand? They, we have a good people here. Yeah. What I can just do when I get the people in the local, put them together with the people in the USA, 
just to share the idea. Oh, you understand? I see, I see. And then whatever content and the idea that they can come with it, if they can come with something that would be better than what did they shoot already, yeah. I think we can take it further. Perfect. So basically, he wants to give young people an opportunity to build a new production company. People who might have the experience, but not the professional experience. Mm. So he's basically saying, look, look at what these guys did in the US. Yeah, can you do better? It's funny, he, it's, it's embarrassing, but look at it. And now, rather than just laugh and say that's trash, mm. highlight what's wrong. What are the mistakes? Come what do you board. see? How yeah. would you do it differently? Yeah. What would you change? What would you propose? And write to him. I need better and the people, people who, understand. yeah, the people who, who rise to the top of the pile with good ideas and good feedback and good critique and a good critical eye, those are the people he's gonna bring together to form a new production team to develop a new show yeah. uh, that he will produce. Fantastic. So you guys we're giving people that. opportunities, man. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in the description below. You can get in touch with him. Search, thank you so much. The retired guy. My nigga. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Joe, you wanna come sit here? Let's wrap it up. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Go yeah, back yeah. in your seats. <laughs> thank you, man. I see why you had him on your show, man. What a great guy, eh? You see what, what? I see why you had him on your show. Yeah, you see, with me, I'm, I'm very open. It goes back to what I was saying to you earlier. I'm very open. I'm not, I, I don't look at certain people and go, oh, those are foreigners. I, I don't want to deal with them. Or that one is from, is, is, is uh, Mutuana. I don't want to meet. I, 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 I'm open to everybody. So mm. what, irrespective of the backgrounds, I feel like there's intelligence and ability and, 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 and value everywhere. And so when I met him, I was like, you know, he, he doesn't speak English well, but yeah. he speaks French, Portuguese, Italian, yes. and then Spanish. what, Lingali or what? A, Spanish, Lingala. Spanish, Lingala, and what else? And, uh, so now imagine, he speaks like seven, eight languages. The English is broken, but look at how he makes his points. Mm. And that's how you know that he's super intelligent. Yeah. But he, I mean, where were you? Were you born in like a village or a township or? So yeah, so it's sort of like in, in, in Kinshasa. I born in Kinshasa. Yeah, so he comes from the, like the hoods of Kinshasa. Mm. But you know he's he he he's just a super smart guy. But um yeah, uh, before we we cut it short, what do you want to be remembered as, man? I ask this everybody. I don't want to be remembered. I I just want my kids to to be a, a living um, legacy of my life. Meaning, who they are, who they become is all I need. Mm, mm. As long as they become good, solid members that contribute to society and that are of value to others, I'm happy. I'm not one of those guys who wants a legacy, a monument, want to be remembered, this is my epitaph, don't forget me, don't forget me. <laughs> I mean, I'm, a, I'm an embodiment of people who've lived before me. Mm. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm trying to make them proud and I'm hoping that those who come after me will do the same. I don't need a street named after me. I'm, I'm already over blessed. I've got so many shows that'll live on forever, that will circulate. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm like part of the global time capsule, if you will. So I don't need more. Yeah. But we strive for more nonetheless. <laughs> Joe, thank you so much for coming through, man. Yeah. Everybody that watches the show knows how much I love you, man. So this was an honor to chill with you. You know, just pick your brain. And bro, man, are you gonna come back on radio? We need you, bro. He's trying to, you know, you know what's going on. You know the vibes. <laughs> you know what we're doing. Yeah, 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 Stop yeah. trying to, he's, he thinks he's clever. <laughs> Watch the space. Yeah. And, and so it's like I'm looking at my older self. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you want to say, so before we wrap nah, it up, nothing, man? nothing, man. Honor. No, yeah. thank you, man. I appreciate it, guys. I'm glad you guys, we could do it out here. Yeah. Piri, so where yeah. to? Buffalo Gang Corner. They've been so gracious. Shout out to them. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Sir, you didn't even taste the food, man. But this is but, th but this is your your type of food, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chill, thank you so much. Appreciate right. it, man. Podcast and chill. Oh, podcast and chill. Boom. Enda. <laughs> <laughs>